Hello, hello everybody. Welcome. Uh, welcome and thank you for attending your developments live market briefing dedicated to the advanced packaging industry. My name is Faisal El Kamasi, sales coordination and customer service for your development. Based on, on, based on how advanced packaging quarterly market monitor, the aim of this webcast market briefing is to provide you in 30 minutes an update to date analysis of this market with a focus on COVID-19 impacts. How experts web have Travedi, senior analyst at your development, will examine the changes to how market outlooks in the context of how prior forecast and what he sees as the most likely outcome during this very uncertain times. Before we get started, I remind you that you are encouraged to submit questions to how analysts during the entire live event using the ask a question windows at the bottom of the screen. Question will be answered right after the presentation. Well, in case we don't have to time to answer all of them, we will follow up with you by email. To conclude, this live event is recorded. You will receive tomorrow an email with the link to access the recorded session. So let's start the webcast and welcome WebHav. Hello, WebHav. Hi, Pesal. Thank you for that great introduction. Uh, welcome, uh, everyone, to live market briefing offered by Yul Development. My name is Vaibho Trevetti. I'll be providing you uh, a talk on uh, status of the advanced packaging landscape amid the coronavirus uh, pandemic. My presentation outline is uh, something like this. I will review the overview of the semiconductor market outlook. I'm sure everybody is uh, anxious given the current situation, how the market is gonna behave short term and long term. After reviewing the over uh, holistic semiconductor market, I will go into advanced packaging market uh, evolution with the uh, impact of the coronavirus and also focus on a vapor level packaging um, forecast. Then I will review key markets and mega trends that's driving uh, many of the leading advanced packaging form factors. Of course, and then I will review the impact of the increasing global tension between US and China. Uh, this seems to be a quite popular topic nowadays and how it's going to impact overall the semiconductor market, packaging, supply chain, and who are the, the winners and uh, who, are, uh, who are more detrimental uh, situation because of the, the US-China uh, trade tensions. We'll also look at a long-term advanced packaging market post, uh, we are still in the pandemic, but uh, once we do get out of the pandemic at some point in time, and also compare the first half of 2020 versus the second half. In closing, I'll also review some of our excellent, great products uh, featuring uh, advanced packaging monitors, uh, teardown reports, and tracks offered by Yule Development and System Plus. So let's look at the semiconductor uh, market uh, outlook uh, before we get into the advanced packaging uh, uh, data. Uh, if you look at 2018, um, semiconductor market was at its peak, uh, surpassing $450 billion. And obviously 2019 remained a somewhat of a downturn year um, with a 12% uh, reduction. And for 2020, we are predicting that at some point in second half, we will take a hit because of the coronavirus driving, uh, you know, reduction uh, for, uh, for the semiconductor market revenue 
by 3%, 3 to 4% in 2020. We still see 2020 as a somewhat of a robust market, but the smartphone demand continues to be sluggish because of the increased uh, uh, replacement cycles. But however, uh, IoT and infrastructure remains quite strong in uh, 2020, despite the, the trade tension and the coronavirus situation. Before we get into the advanced packaging um, forecast, let's look at how the smartphone volume forecast looks like. Here you can see high-end, low-end, and uh, feature phone um, forecast for uh, up to 2024. As I mentioned, the replacement cycles are increasing and we see sluggish saturated growth for the high-end market at negative 1%. The low-end smartphone seems to be flat to slightly higher with positive 1% growth rate. And the feature phones are somewhat flat to down. So in 2015, 1.8 billion, billion units of phones, obviously we enjoyed the peaks for about three to four years, and for the next few years, next four to five years, we do see that come down, which is not a surprise, I think. Uh, let's look at the advanced packaging uh, market um, from 2014 to 2025 to give us some perspective. Here you can see 2014, back in 2014, the total market for the advanced for for packaging itself, including mainstream packages, which is covered in the other category, they were running at 62% versus the advanced packaging form factors were running at 38%. The total market TAM was 53 billion. As we um, went into 2019, this grew to about 68 billion dollar market with advanced packaging in increasing its market share to 43% consistently. And as we go into 2025, we are predicting about $85 billion market that includes the IDM, the OSATs, um, the mainstream packaging, such as Wirebond and LeadFrame and all the advanced packaging form factors. And roughly it's, we are predicting to 50-50 split as we go to approach 2024-2025. Now let's look at the wafer level market dynamics, uh, focus on fan out and wafer level CSP revenue. Uh, wafer level packaging market is expected to surpass $5 billion threshold by 2025. And if you look at the fan out, the growth rate is significantly higher uh, because many of the fan out form factors uh, by TSMC, such as the Info OS, um, and also uh, form factors such as Focos are gaining a lot of momentum into uh, networking, routers, and HPC type application with 15.9% CAGR. And wafer level CSP has found somewhat of a mainstream mature and reliable place into the advanced packaging market. However, the growth is somewhat flat to slightly higher at 3.2%. But overall, we think wafer level packaging market is a lucrative um, market to participate in for OSATs and foundries. Let's look at the key markets that's driving uh, these revenue growths. Um, so obviously we started with smartphones um, as the, the initiator, and now we are getting into IoT and ever increasing interconnectedness with AI, cloud computing, edge computing, um, robotics, 
would be the next decade that would require a lot of these infrastructures to be in place. Now let's look at the old and new advanced packaging. Uh, on the left, uh, we have more traditional packaging technologies that were prevalent prior to 2019. And what type of form factors that we see growing? Uh, the system in package double-sided uh, packages are gaining a lot of popularity because of the RF module adoption and adoption in the smartphone uh, form factors. Antenna in package is a new application that's also gaining a lot of momentum. And the package on package uh, fan out uh, form factors are also increasing its adoption. And at the same time, we are cannibalizing wire bond form factors to some extent. Uh, this is a, a quick uh, mapping of the packaging uh, form factors from line and space versus a thickness standpoint. From left to right, you're going from uh, more advanced to less advanced packages. Two and a half D and three D IC uh, and fan out remain very popular for high end niche application. And then there is a fan in and fan out space um, area for 10, 10, 15, 15 line in space. And beyond that, you have your traditional laminate based um, packages. In this slide, um, I wanted to show some of the leading uh, packaging form factors. Namely, on the left, you will see fan out. Uh, it comes in many flavors, uh, fan out multi die system in package, POP, which is popular for uh, TSMC's integrated fan out, uh, info OS and info AIP antenna in package is one of the latest application that we will see on the upcoming Apple iPhones for the 5G, 5G infrastructure. Some of the players that are uh, racing to win more business with different form factors are Samsung, JSAT, ASC, Nepis, and of course TSMC for the fan out. For the SOIC and triplets, it's relatively a new platform that TSMC is driving and Intel is also investing significant capabilities for their Phobos platform and TSMC is also approaching the system on integrated chips, which essentially is trying to use hybrid bonding and uh, more advanced line and space attach process. And the end result is we want higher bandwidth and better scalability. On the right, Bottom right, you will see um, dual sided system in package. These have gained their popularities and adoption in the last few years, where ASC, Amcor, uh, and JSAT are uh, doing tremendous am uh, no, um, amount of business uh, for the RF modules, where you have partial mold, compartmental shielding, uh, double sided attach. Um, basically, try to use all the real estate on the substrate and make the most of it. On the top right, um, you have the two and a half 3D uh, TSP interposer form factor, which, which remains a niche technology for HBM solution, um, specifically for uh, HPC and GPU application. And we see this maturing, uh, possibly adopting some of the SOIC type uh, um, process developments, um, and, but it, it will still remain a niche technology. However, the, the players are working on how to increase and continue to increase the performance as we, as we slow down the Moore's law and, and many of the, uh, the OEMs are relying on advanced packaging to push the, push the uh, process envelope to the next node. 
now let's look at some alternative TSV uh, technologies. Um, so if you, if you are not doing interposer design, many of the players are offering uh, TSV interposer less uh, designs um, and they're slowly growing. Intel has the, the EMIB architecture. Uh, ASC has the FOCOS. Uh, TSMC has the info on substrate. And Amcore is also developing uh, Swift and they are trying to, which is also fan out, but without any TSV or interposer. So I think they're gaining more customer adoption um, as they introduce their Swift process. Um, I wanted to look at quickly the fan out portfolio. Um, this is uh, courtesy of AAC, and as you can see, they have a multiple multitude of form factors, EWLB, Focus, and a most recent M-series, which provides the side mold protection and higher board level reliability. You have the fan out package and package, fan out multi-die SIPs, and the latest is they invested significant amount of money in uh, putting a panel line. In addition to the ASC's breadth of the fan out technologies, uh, we also see TSMC and Intel to pioneer the, the chiplet uh, approach for the next few years. Now let's look at the post pandemic scenario um, in terms of increasing global US China trade tensions as we see more and more news come every day uh, and announcements from all parties. Um, so we think it will reshape the semiconductor supply chain uh, when we look back on this after two years. Uh, TSMC announced 12 billion investment, building a fab, five nanometer fab in Arizona to be opening in 2024. And also not stop supporting Huawei from its uh, uh, latest silicon technologies. We also see MediaTek increasing its OSAT capacity as it remains uh, to be one of the beneficiary as high silicon um, will, be, will be banned in terms of used by Huawei for uh, designing their chips. Uh, other beneficiary, uh, beneficiaries we think include Foxconn, uh, MediaTek obviously, and country like India where Foxconn is, is investing significant amount of money uh, to build EMS houses for assembly of iPhones. And as many of the corporations diversify their supply chain somewhat away from China or uh, look at it from dual sourcing standpoint. Uh, Nokia and Ericsson also are potential winners, Oppo and Xiaomi, um, Samsung and Murata. We also see they would benefit from this uh, situation. Now let's look at the market post pandemic first half versus second half. What I, ha what I have here is we are looking at Q1 2020 revenue for top two OSATs. Now, if you see the, the 2020 Q1 revenue was significantly higher and somewhat unseasonably higher than even 2018 and 2019. And many IDMs such as TSMC and Intel also reported excellent Q1 for 2020, surpassing their previous year over year growth uh, targets. In terms of Q2, Q2 seems to remain still strong and robust based on uh, what we hear from the key players. And uh, we don't really see the pandemic hitting any forecast or any downturn type scenarios yet. However, I think as we approach into second half, possibly in mid to late Q3, there seems to, the, the, we, we do predict there will be some level of slowdown uh, that will impact the consumer demand and specifically affecting the mobile and consumer segment. Uh, for the second half, the infrastructure demand such as the 5G HPC 
We think those will remain robust. However, the consumer section, such as the wearables, the IoT, the smartphones, um, will definitely be affected five to ten percent from from packaging revenue standpoint, which is which is yet to be seen. Here, I want to show some of the monitors and tracks that we are offering at Yule Development. Um, Specifically, the advanced packaging quarterly market packaging service that looks at all key players. And uh, we look at shipments, revenue, projections, uh, trends, market trends, capex. And similarly, we have the DRAM and NAN monitors, uh, as well as the application process um, market monitor. And we also have various teardown tracks uh, through our System Plus consulting group. Here are some of our recent reports that, that would complement the advanced packaging um, area. Uh, we published the fan out packaging market report early in, um, in April, May uh, 2020. And we are about to publish the status of the advanced packaging industry as an updated report in July. And we have also published uh, equipment and materials for fan out packaging, specifically looking at the equipment and material supply chain. Some of the teardown reports include um, teardown of the MediaTek uh, radar chipset and also comparing the fan out packaging processes. Thank you for your attention. And now we can open this up for Q&A. Thank you, thank you very much, Debha, for this very interesting presentation. So yes, as Debha mentioned, uh, we, we, we start the Q&A session, we receive many questions uh, that we are about to answer now during this uh, Q&A session. So Debha, uh, first question would be, um, how do you see all that market will be affected in the second half due to the coronavirus? So right now, as I mentioned, I think uh, when, we, when we talk to some of the players and partners, uh, we don't see any their end customer showing any significant downturn. There might be a few customers that have started uh, showing some indication uh, of the the forecast reduction, uh, the demand reduction, uh, but, the, but the Q2 seems to be quite strong. Uh, they haven't published the results yet. But for the second half, I think the late Q3, Q4, and possibly going into early 2021, and that is just my, my point of view, is we will see this coronavirus effect trickling down to, to the OSI market. Okay. Okay, interesting. Thank you. Uh, a second, a second question: uh, What are some promising uh, or emerging application for fan out package for the next few years? Uh, so for the so fan out packages, some of the promising uh, emerging form factors we see is antennae package is a big one from volume standpoint. We see increase in uh, more complex um, packages for the high-end market. So for example, Amcor is approaching uh, Swift with a fan out package uh, targeted for the HBM or you know, HPC type applications. Uh, we see AAC uh, gaining more traction with their Focus uh, form factor and uh, TSMC going into info MS and info OS type form factors for networking applications. Uh, but as far as the mobile and consumers go, we, we do not see many, many of the devices going onto the fan out platform just from, I think primarily cost standpoint, uh, many of the devices are, are sufficient with the wafer level CSP uh, or even flip chip CSP type uh, configuration. So I think, I guess to answer the question, uh, fan out growth uh, would be more to the antenna in package, possibly doing uh, some heterogeneous uh, integration type form factors, but for the, the high end uh, HPC type markets. 
Okay, thank you. Um, another question. Uh, do you see OZAT uh, compete in high hand uh, SOIC type platform or foundry players to dominate in this area? Yeah, that's a great question. I think um, so TSMC and Intel are seems to be the leader in terms of driving uh, this uh, SOIC chiplet um, wafer level, as TSMC calls it, WLSI uh, type uh, integration. And they, they, they have, they're more uh, equipped to handle some of these problems given their foundry experience. So I think OSETs may be uh, dealing with these uh, type of things in five to 10 years down the roads, but uh, I still see OSATs uh, functioning in more mature, mature processes and equipments. Um, Okay, uh, I think we we run out of time. So um, the we have we receive a lot of questions, uh, but uh, we will uh, do our best to answer them directly by email. Uh, the where the live market briefing is now ending. Uh, thank you again, uh, Webha, for your time and analysis. Uh, to everyone, you will receive soon an email with the link to the presentation and uh, replay within 24 hours. We'll do our best to send you that. Feel free to share the presentation with colleagues. Uh, finally, please let me just remind you that you can find all our reports, how tracks and how monitors on our website, uh, www.i-micronews.com. So do not hesitate to contact us. If you have additional questions, we will uh, do our best to answer. You can find how contact details at the last slide of the presentation. Thank you for joining us today. Have a good day and take care. Bye-bye.